In my opinion, the Minnesota Timberwolves are the most intriguing team for the 2023-2024 season. And guess what? I'm a believer in them. I mean, to an extent, I don't think they're about to win an NBA championship or anything like that. But I think that the over under for them right now is 43 and a half. And I think that they can be a lot better than that. Now, Timbo's fans, before you get super excited because Kenny Beecham is on the bandwagon, I do want to admit I make videos like this every single season during the offseason. Like these are the teams I'm excited about. These are the teams I'm not excited about. And I have missed a ton. Last year, I made a video about the two teams that got left in the dust by their contemporaries. The first team was Chicago Bulls. They're pretty good on that. They were a 41 team last season. And the last team, the next team that I said, hey, don't expect them to be good this year, was the Miami Heat. Yeah, they weren't great in the regular season, but they made an NBA Finals appearance. So I'm just saying, just because Kenny Beach, I'm thinking the Wolves going to be better, don't mean that that's even close to being a reality. But let's talk about the things that make me think that they could be better than people anticipate. So we all know last offseason, they made a huge, huge decision. Um, they went all in. They went all in on a roster that wasn't close to being amazing. But that's okay. Maybe. I, I guess time will tell. They traded all the first round picks plus some young players to bring in Rudy Gobert. And year one of the Rudy Gobert experiment with Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards did not go well. I mean, it was good enough to make a playoff appearance, but that wasn't what the expectation was. Again, you traded all the draft capital and everything to just end up basically in the same spot you were pre Rudy Gobert. It was not pretty. I remember the trade going down and just we making videos asking who the heck were they bidding against to give up all of that Danny Ainge finesse. And that has nothing to do with the talent level of Rudy Gobert, but just like all of that. And again, I'm a big Rudy fan. He's one of the best rim protectors we've seen in the last 10 years. He's going to go down in history as one of the best rim protecting centers ever. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. But that was a ton of capital to give away when you already had a center on the roster. You traded for a center when your center just made all NBA. Anyway, uh, the trade happened, so we, we don't want to digress on that too much. We got to think about the future now. We have to try to accept the fact that the trade happened and how can they be better. Y'all know I don't, I don't be having a script when I write these, so we're going to be all over the place. There are a couple different reasons that, that make me a believer in the Minnesota Timberwolves. The one that's above all is Anthony Edwards. Um, and this is actually weird timing because I was going to make this video regardless. But as I'm recording this video an hour ago, Team USA went against Team Germany and Anthony Edwards was a man. And that that's two rosters with a lot of NBA talent. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they're beating up on some team that don't have NBA players. They went to get Franz Wagner, uh, Mo Wagner, Dennis Schroeder, Isaac Bonga, Daniel Tice. Anthony Edwards dropped 34 points, closed out the game, and he was the best player on the court. And we talked about this on the Kenny Beecham podcast, the, the, the Kenny Beecham podcast. Go check it out. About how there are certain players that in the FIBA ball for the USA that are standing out for me. And, and those players were Anthony Edwards and Austin Reeves for different reasons. I'm not saying that Anthony Edwards has been the best player on the court every single one of these games, because that's not true. There's just so much talent on the team. Some days it is Tyrese Halliburton. Some days it's Anthony Edwards. Some days it's both, and you kind of saw that today. So he's not always the best player on the court, but boy, his impact is always felt. Whether it be hitting clutch shots to close the game or getting clutch steals to close the game against Spain, like he has been everywhere and doing exactly what you want. Like when I watch these international games, it's not just about representing the country as a fan because that medal don't mean much to me, <laughs> to me but it's about, okay, who's using this offseason to be the better version of themselves? And I'm seeing that in Anthony Edwards. And that's saying a lot because last year he made an all-star appearance. I think the next jump is happening. Now, I don't know if that means superstar, because in my opinion, there's only a handful of superstars in all of basketball, but he looks really good, and there's nothing for me to believe that he won't be dramatically better than he was last season. And there's also been this evolution, and maybe I'm reading into this a little bit too much, because that's what we do in the offseason. We got nothing else to do. We're looking at NBA schedules, which we will talk about when we talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. We look at NBA schedules and stuff, and we dissect stuff, right? When the Rudy Gobert trade happened for Anthony Edwards, we're talking a month or two into the season. Anthony Edwards got ca caught on Instagram liking a post that was talking about it being the worst trade in the history of ball. He went into a post-game interview saying, like, hey, I can't be myself because the pain is clogged, which, yeah, you know what I'm saying? There's a double-edged sword, Rudy Gobert. You saw it last season. The Minnesota Timberwolves went from a team that were okay defensively to one of the top eight defenses of basketball if you adjust for getting rid of garbage time. But their offense took a, took a stab in, in the back, and that can be the Rudy Gobert experience. We're going to be really good defensively, but we might be really bad offensively. But it hasn't always been the case, right? The Utah Jazz had one season where they peaked as the number one offense of all the basketball, Rudy Gobert being the center. So there is a world where their offense could be a lot better, but last season was not that. One thing that those Utah Jazz teams had 
was the the right amount of spacing so that Rudy Gobert can be effective, right? Rudy Gobert led the league in screen assists, which is a stat that people care about, I guess. And he also led the league in dunks like a hundred different times. Like that's all the brother did was dunk the ball, dunk the ball, dunk the ball. Both of those things took a drop, especially in the first half of the season when D'Angelo Russell was there. Now you saw it go up a little bit when Mike Conley ended up in town because Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert had a connection from their previous stop. And at one point, a couple years ago, they were one of the better pick and roll duos in all of basketball. And I haven't dug into the, the elite numbers about um, the second half of the season when they started back playing together. But let's just go out on the limb and say it was probably better with those two as pick and roll versus D'Angelo Russell and Rudy Gobert. Anyway, I believe Anthony Edwards is going to be a stud. The next thing that makes me excited about them is Carl Anthony Towns. Now, again, this experiment between the two bigs did not look pretty. Um, the first month and a half of the season, it was it was awful. They ended up losing some really bad games to like the Spurs on back to back. You lost to the Spurs twice in one week, bro. You that, like that's hard to do last year. That team was trying to get Victor Wimbyama, and they were successful, but they were bad on purpose. And you lost two different games to them. And then eventually, you saw Carl Anthony Towns get injured, and the injury ended up being. I want to say I don't want to say uh, better than anticipated because he did have a setback. But when I was watching that game live, it looked like he snapped his Achilles. Like he even did the whole thing that Kobe and Boogie both did when they hurt their Achilles. Where like they kind of looked back because they thought somebody stepped on their leg. He did that, and I'm like, oh, that Achilles is out there. But it wasn't Achilles. But if you look at the numbers with the two centers together, it's dreadful. Um, the defense, elite. Because you think about the Minnesota Timberwolves, they have a bunch of really solid defenders. Jaden McDaniels, who we will talk about briefly in a couple seconds. Anthony Edwards, again, can defend pretty well. Um, Mike Conley, post-trade deadline, positive defender. And, of course, Rudy Gobert in the center position. Their defense is really good. But the offense with those two together was an ugly sight, and the numbers say it as well. It was bad like really really bad now i think a big a big part of that is because there is a lack of familiarity between rudy gobert anthony edwards and carl anthony towns i mean you got to think about the type of player carl anthony towns has been in his career where he's been a legitimately three level scorer and he has been one of the best offensive bigs that we've seen in a minute uh, well in the top tier let's not say that because uh, nicole Jokic exists but he's been a top tier offensive talent for a while now as far as putting the ball in the basket and now you add Rudy Gobert he's not really three levels anymore because the paint is clogged up similar to what Anthony Edwards had mentioned at the beginning of the season so now he had to try to adjust his game to be more second level and third level and though we know he's one of the best shooting centers of all time that's not where all of his buckets came from but last season it felt like majority of them had to come that way again only when those two were together because when you split those two apart you saw a lot of really good lineups, whether it be Carl Anthony Towns at the five or Rudy Gobert at the five and having Rudy Gobert and, uh, and Cal Anderson, even though they hated each other the last game of the season. When those two players were on the court together with no Carl Anthony Towns, the, te the team was great offensively and defensively. When you look at lineups at Carl Anthony Towns and Jaden McDaniels as the four, those lineups look really good offensively and defensively. But you have a lot of money tied up into the center position, so you need to try to figure out a way to have Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert flourish together and i think part of that is just with continuity i cannot express how important continuity can be in this league it's rare that a team make this much of an adjustment and they look amazing the first year now of course it can't happen it has happened but it's it's a rare occasion unless we're talking about some of the greatest players of all time and as of right now in Anthony towns rudy gobert and anthony Edwards don't fit into that list yet you see anthony Edwards? I'm saying yeah. So I just trust with having a full year under their belt that things are going to be better. They also have a ton of players playing international ball right now between Anthony Edwards at USA, the DR having Carl Anthony Towns, France having Rudy Gobert. Who am I forget? I'm forgetting about to be. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is playing for Canada. And I feel like there's one more player that I'm just forgetting about. Oh, Carl Anderson is playing for, I want to say China. Now, this is where we get extremely nerdy uh, because th th there are some things that like, 95% of NBA fans don't care about. Uh, last week, the regular season schedule was announced, and some people just used it as time to watch the cool videos that all 30 teams end up dropping to announce their schedule. And some people like me look into their schedules and try to figure out who has the best advantage due to the schedule. Now, everybody knows that you play against the same team X amount of times. That's not, there's no advantage there, but the advantage has to do with travel. The advantage has to do with back-to-backs. The advantage has to do with three games and four nights. Which team benefited the most? The Minnesota Timberwolves are one of the top teams up there. Yeah. And and again, it's, 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 I'm maybe stretching a little bit. I might be stretching a little bit. 
but they benefited a ton. So this comes from Jack Borman. Uh, link will be in the description to the original tweet. The Timberwolves have been given a gift with their schedule in terms of rest advantage. They have 44 of their games with equal rest to their opponent. They have 23 games with the rest advantage and thir only 13 games with a disadvantage when it comes to rest. Now, what does that mean? Uh, over half of the games this season, the team that they're going against is on the exact same rest schedule, which is cool. That means it's a one-to-one -one battle of talent slash X's and O's and all of that stuff. But the contrary to that is they have more games at advantages where they have fresh legs, but their opponent is on the second day of a back-to-back. -back. And those are games that we typically see the more rested team win, especially earlier in the regular season. They also start off their schedule with a bunch of home games. Now, they also did the same thing last year. And again, I mentioned that they were not very good in that. But continuity! Continuity, ladies and gentlemen. Carnegie Towns missed 50-plus games last year, and he's looking great right now in the DR. I think that they are going to start off their season a lot better than they did last year. And then we got Jaden McDaniels. There's rumors that he is now sitting at 6'11 this season. Rumored. I guess we'll see officially once we get to training camp and stuff. But a 6'11 wing that was personally on my all-defensive ballot. He didn't make it, but he should have been there in my personal opinion. Where he is a hound on the defensive side of the ball, whether it be one-on-one -on -one defense in the passing lanes. He does a little bit of everything. And we've seen over the first three years of his career, his offensive game has got better and better and better. And last year, he ended the season as a 40% three-point shooter. Is that going to be sustainable this season? The, Tim the, the Temple is definitely hope so. <laughs> the Temple is definitely hope so. But he provided so much value to this team defensively that I think can't get overlooked. So you add really solid point guard play, one of the best defensive bigs in all the basketball, the elite offensive talents of Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, and the defense of Jaden McDaniels. That makes me excited. The one thing that is holding me back is that last year when it got down to the clutch, when it got down to the nitty gritty, this offense stinked. And this was also the case before the Rudy Gobert trade where one of the biggest knocks on that young Timberwolves team was like, man, they blew, they blew in a lot of games. It, it, we saw it in the playoffs, 15, 20 point leads just gone like that. And that carried over to the Rudy Gobert era as well. And hopefully, with the maturity of Anthony Edwards going up and we see him taking over some games at FIBA Ball, that that will happen a lot less, that's a lot less often, and it accounts for a little bit more wins. Did I say anything to make you convinced that the that the Wolves should be better? Here's my closing argument. Anthony Edwards. That should do it. Yep, that should do it. That should do it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Minnesota Timberwolves fans, I, I want to come to Minnesota, come to the Target Center to watch a game. But that's only if y'all live up to y'all part of the bargain by making me look good with this video.